Shortly after we moved to Texas, I requested a couple of IEMs or in-ear monitors from HiFiGo.com. The purpose of this review was to hand over a pair of budget and mid-priced options to my buddy who is a musician to try both out and see if a non-audiophile could notice much of a difference, and if so, appreciate the difference between the two different IEMs. Granted, while he did listen to music on them, where things got interesting is when he used both IEMs for monitoring himself and an entire band in the context of live music. So yeah, let's chat about his impressions as well as mine, which are from an audiophile perspective, and see can we figure out why in the world someone would drop $500 for the Chimera Imperial Scolds over the T-Force Trilogy Yuanlis, which are $400 cheaper? And with a warm welcome back to New Record Day, that's exactly what we're going to do. Just a quick disclaimer, both these headphones were given to me for this review by HiFiGo.com. I requested these a while back because I wanted to try this little experiment. HiFiGo.com is not sponsoring or paying for this review, and with that disclaimer out of the way, let's dive in and have some fun. So, over the last few months, I've been volunteering to run sound at our church, and while doing so, it's been fascinating to try my hands and ears when it comes to mixing a live band. Even more, it's been incredibly rewarding to help fix a lot of audio-related issues that the band was struggling with, including the horrendous, distorted nonsense that they were hearing in their in-ear monitor mix. Understand this, guys. If their mix is bad as a band, there ain't a chance in the world that the mix that the audience is hearing will ever be as good as it can be. So, the first step before even looking at the front of house mix was to try and figure out why the monitor mix being sent to the musicians was so freaking terrible. A few things were discovered in this venture, and the one that we're going to be talking about today is the importance of high quality IEMs and how much of a difference they can make when it comes to live or pre recorded music playback. The first pair of IEMs that we're going to chat about today are the T Force Trilogy Yuanlis. These retail for $119, feature one single driver come with three sizes of balanced ear tips, bass enhanced ear tips, and one pair of foams. The drivers are made of metal, they feel substantial in the hand, and they are pretty comfortable, but slightly heavier than the second IEM that we're gonna be chatting about today. While seated in the ear, the microphonics heard from tapping the cable is about the same between the two different IEMs, so there aren't any advantages with one over the other in that regard. From my perspective, these sound pretty good, and while a clear step up from the Sennheiser IEMs that the band was using as an audiophile, I'm going to have to pass on these for a couple of different reasons. First, the bass sounded a little one-noted in some of the complex passages, and second, I had a hard time hearing distinct and clear instrument separation. Checking out Jack White's brand new album, Fear of the Dawn, I kept noticing that while the mid bass and bass was tight and it was punchy, I couldn't hear each and every single note being played with ease, and I certainly didn't hear lower bass tones that I was hoping for. While the bass enhanced ear tips did help a little bit with this, bass impressions weren't the most favorable with these guys. Last, and this is what really drove me crazy, these almost always sound claustrophobic to me. It's almost as if every single mix, regardless of how big or wide it actually is, it all sounded pretty much the same and it always gave this front row presentation with every single song. Checking out opening from the Tord Gustavin trio, the track Findings features a really nice drum intro with piano and gave the chance to hear staging and how staging can be, and in this case, the lack thereof. Going from the T-Force to the next IEM that we're gonna be chatting about, I am convinced that anyone would easily be able to hear this, and trust me, there is no comparison. 
whether it's instrument separation or just the distance of placement between the instruments, the T-Force made this track sound like it's right in front of you, which unfortunately doesn't sound all that natural. Decay and all things in the time domain sounded truncated, so most of the top end sounds as if there's a wet blanket over it. So while these are clearly better than the cheap Sennheisers that came with the G3 packs that the band uses for live music, and believe it or not, my musician buddy really actually likes these, I don't think I can honestly recommend them to audiophiles even at 119 bucks. So with that, Let's change gears and talk about what might be one of the best sounding IEMs that I have ever heard all the way up to a thousand smackaroos. So the Scolds were a solid recommendation by my buddy DMS. Make sure you subscribe to his channel. Uh, it's down below. And I would suspect that Douglas and I might be hearing the same thing or a lot of the same things. Guys, these things sound sick. The Scolds also come with a plethora of tips to try, and I settled on the foams as being my personal favorite. As I mentioned before, the comfort on both of the IEMs is good, but these do actually take the lead simply because they are light as a feather and it's easy to forget that they are even there. The stock cables that come with the Scolds aren't the best choice for musicians simply because the adapters are so freaking big that now you have this giant thing sticking out of your back pocket or your hip. For audiophiles, this might not be a deal breaker as many of them might not even use the adapters and they're just using balanced gear from the get-go. Anyhow, my buddy used some replacement cables that took care of the problem and I used both the ones that he used and the stock cables when I did all of my critical listening. I wasn't able to hear a worthwhile difference between the two different cables, but with both of them, these IEMs are seriously flat out jaw dropping in just about every single category, except for insanely deep bass. One key difference between these and the cheaper Yuanlis is the Scolds make use of five drivers. While I don't subscribe to the idea that more drivers always means better sound, in this case that's exactly what's happening. It's almost shocking to try the same tracks of Jack White's Fear of the Dawn back to back on both of these IEMs. The sub bass and bass is so much more rich it's defined, and while it's still not dropping insanely deep bass, the clarity of each and every single note is what impressed me the most. Climbing into mid-range and above, I challenge you to find a more balanced and beautiful and sweet sounding mid-band at this price point. Listening to raging distorted guitars on these is actually a treat where nothing sounds forward or grainy or fatiguing even after hours of listening. No joke, the first time that I put these on, I listened to track after track for three straight hours, and the only reason I stopped is because it was time for dinner. And remember what I was saying about the wet blanket being on the T-Force's top end? Well, it looks like Chimera Imperial ran out of blankets when they came up with the Scold. It's insane. When I went back and forth and I listened to the same track opening from Tor Gustavin, it blew my mind just how much more top end information was missing from the T-Force and just how open, clear, and concise it sounded with the Scolds. The bottom line, it was no contest across the entire audio spectrum with the Scolds completely destroying the T-Force in every single audiophile aspect. When I asked my buddy to comment about his impressions after using the Scolds for quite some time with live music, here's what he had to say. You did a lot to clear up the monitor mixes around the same time those IEMs were introduced. So to say that they are extremely clear and quiet is certainly true, but how much do I attribute to just the IEMs? When I sing with those Scolds, it feels like I'm hearing the sound of my voice as it leaves my mouth before it hits the mic. There isn't anything in the way. No noise, no embellishment, nothing but what I think you might be hearing on the other side of the mic. Dollar for dollar, there's an exponential confidence boost versus the entry level IEMs that we have been using in the past. So there you have it. I wanna take a moment to thank Hi-Fi Go for sending these out. I'm sorry it took so long to get to this review. And I do hope that you guys consider shopping with them 
if you are in the market for IEMs. As for the two that we checked out today, it's pretty obvious that the scolds are the way to go, especially from an audiophile perspective, it's not even close. If you take high quality music playback serious or you are a working musician who is tired of a bad monitor mix in your ears, consider upgrading your IEM and please let me know down below in the comments, what is your experience, what have you noticed, and what is your favorite IEM? And with that, I'll see you crazy son of a guns in the next video.